Let's take a look at how to do regression inference on the calculator. I'll be entering data that's found on page 749. I'll enter the NEA change in list 1, and in list 2, I'll be entering the fat gain values. So I'll go to stat, edit, and I'll clear out my lists, and then I'll enter my data. Now that the data is entered, let's perform a linear regression t-test. To do this, I'll hit stat, I'll go over to test, and I'll go down to the very bottom, and option F we see says linear regression t-test. My x's are in list 1, my y's are in list 2, um, and since each ordered pair occurred exactly once, I don't have to worry about a frequency list. And I wanted to see if there was a linear relationship or not between the two variables. I didn't necessarily have a perceived direction of the relationship, so I'm going to choose not equals. Notice uh, beta is our slope, and rho here is our correlation coefficient. And remember, these two are, are linked together. So if the slope is positive, the correlation coefficient will be positive. And if the slope is negative, the correlation coefficient will be negative. So beta is the true slope of the regression line, and rho is the true correlation coefficient. Uh, I will store my equation in, in uh, y1 if I wanted to. Just remembering how to do that, we go to vars, y vars, and choose function, y1. And I will come down here to calculate. So we can see our test statistic value is negative 4.64, and our p-value is very small, so it seems like there is a linear relationship between the two variables. And if I scroll down further, I can see my estimate for the slope and the y-intercept, slope here, y-intercept here, um, my value for s, um, which is the standard deviation of the residuals, describing the spread of the residuals around the regression line. So how far off we would be on average if we were to use um, this regression equation to make predictions. And we also have the correlation coefficient, which is r, and the coefficient of determination, which is r squared. Remember that r squared, this value here of about 61%, says that 61% of the variation in y can be explained by the variation in x. Let's also calculate a confidence interval. So to do this, we'd hit stat, choose tests, scroll to the very bottom or near the bottom, and I will choose option G, linear regression T interval. My data, once again, is stored in list 1 and list 2. Uh, my X is in list 1, my Y is in list 2. I will come down here to confidence level. Let's say I want a 95% confidence level. I'll come down to calculate. And this is going to give me a confidence interval for the slope. Notice that 0 is not in this interval. Um, all our, our uh, values in our interval are negative, which would indicate that the slope truly is negative. So we are 95% confident that the true value of the slope is somewhere between negative 0.005 and negative 0.0019. Once again, if we scroll down, we can see the rest of the information related to linear regression.